What is up, guys? Welcome back. I'm Kevin Kreitz. Uh, if you guys are new here, this is the crypto channel where we go over five charts every day, always starting off with Bitcoin, Ethereum. We'll take a look at the Bitcoin dominance chart today, along with Solana and KSM. And as always, we will be looking at the Ichimoku cloud for everything I just listed. Markets are looking a little bearish today, guys. And if you guys are not new here, uh, you are not surprised because we hit pretty much every price target that we talked about the last few days. Um, and technically, if you can follow me on Twitter, we hit every price target we've been talking about for over a week now. But let's let's just go over some quick headlines here, guys. Uh, just taking a look at the crypto market caps. Ethereum's catching up, and there's a reason that we're looking at this. Um, I wanted to show you guys some headlines. Uh, we talked about why the markets were pumping pretty much all week on Twitter, on YouTube. We talked about it, that it was all about the Ethereum test nets. And yesterday was the last test net upgrade. Now, I understand there's some confusion about the Ethereum hard fork because the Ethereum hard fork was pushed to, I believe, mid-August. However, the last test net did launch yesterday. And you guys can see here, Ethereum's London hard fork has gone live on Rinkeby testnet, according to the lead, leading developer, Tim Bico. And by the way, guys, before I go any further, real quick, you guys spoke in the comments and on Twitter and I listened. You guys wanted timestamps. There should be timestamps in this video in the description down below. If you guys are just here for the charts, you don't want to hear me ramble on about anything, feel free to skip over to those timestamps, guys. So just jumping back into these headlines, guys. This means that the much anticipated upgrade has now been deployed on all three test nets. Robston Gorelli upgraded to London on June 24th and June 30th, respectively. As reported by you today, the hard fork is likely to go live on the main net August 4th. This is an important date, guys, and we're gonna we're gonna remember this. And we're gonna come back to this when looking at the charts later, because that's gonna help us try and figure out when Ethereum and the rest of the market might turn. A little bullish again because as you guys noticed in the last few weeks after bitcoin hit 28k and the market looked pretty rough it was ethereum leading up to the first test net on june 24th that led this market back into a bit of a pump and as i kept trying to say in the videos and i kept saying on twitter after june 7th or no sorry not june 7th guys july 7th which was the last test net which happened yesterday we would see prices start to dip and we pretty much immediately after the test net started to see prices trend back down. So just reading over a bit more of this for you guys, Ethereum's London hard fork, which includes Ethereum's improvement proposal EIP 1559 is considered to be one of the most important and at the same time, one of the most controversial upgrades in the project's history. It dramatically will dramatically change the network's fee model by introducing the so-called base fee instead of the existing first price auction fee. Meanwhile, the burn mechanism that comes with EIP 1559 will turn Ether into a deflationary asset. Ethereum founder Vitalik Buterin recently joked that a decreasing supply could turn ETH into, quote, ultra sound money. So from there, the article goes on to talk about miners uh, opposing this change because it'll make a significant dent in their revenues. And then there's also this part. Critics also point to the fact that Ether's total supply will remain malleable and unpredictable, despite the de deflationary pressure that is currently seen as a major bull case for the second largest cryptocurrency. So I'm not 100% sure what this is referring to. I'm going to dive into this over the next 24 hours and whatever I find, I'll make sure to throw up for you guys. Uh, if you guys know anything about it, feel free to leave a comment down below or tweet at me. But there is some criticism that that this upgrade will not make Ethereum as deflationary as they're claiming. And I'm not sure what the case for that criticism is, but I'll dive into it. Whatever I find, I'll let you guys know. On top of that, there are some other headlines I want to show you guys about Ethereum because this 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 has huge implications for the entire crypto space including all coins. So as we all know now, Ethereum keeps outperforming Bitcoin and we see that headline after headline. We watched that over the last couple weeks, even coming back to this May 31st headline, can Ether overtake Bitcoin? Its resilience in May's crypto crash shows it might happen. And going back headline after headline, Ethereum gas fees plunge to yearly low. Ethereum gas fees at six month low as market cools, layer two solutions ease congestion. And we see this recent article July 7th, Ethereum could replace Bitcoin as the dominant store of value, says Goldman Sachs. And coming down to this quote down here, 
Ether currently looks like the cryptocurrency with the highest real use potential is Ethereum, the platform on which it is a native digital currency, is the most popular development platform for smart contract applications, says a Goldman Sachs analyst in a note to clients on Tuesday. So it is becoming more and more evident that Ethereum is going to potentially lead. I mean, it is leading mass adoption because it's so far ahead of every other blockchain. Just taking a look at this article that we looked at yesterday, Axie Infinity nears $100 million weekly sales in NFT domination. And this matters because of Ethereum. You need Ethereum to buy Axies. You need Ethereum in Decentraland. You need Ethereum for most of these very popular applications. The majority of people playing Axie Infinity around the world, if you look at the stats, they've done polls on their Twitter, it's it's not crypto users. Axie Infinity, NFT games, Ethereum is bringing mass adoption into the space because Ethereum has a use case and there is no question mark around that. Nobody debates that. So when we look at the market caps of Ethereum versus Bitcoin, we start to see that Ethereum is catching up. I mean, it, it's only about what, maybe four or 400,000 away. And there's a lot of ways that this could play out in the coming months. And I also want to show one more article before we dive into the charts, but everything we've talked about is going to be relevant to how we look at the charts in a few minutes here. But Bitcoin mining saves oldest hydropower station in the US. And this was about 49 minutes ago, this one up. So Bitcoin mining is coming to North America. I mean, Texas has opened its doors and as miners relocate, Bitcoin is still very relevant. But how this plays out between these two coins, Bitcoin and Ethereum, is going to dictate how the market shapes up in the coming months. Because there is a few different ways that this could play out in the coming months. And one scenario is that Bitcoin manages to flip back into a bullish zone and lead the entire market as it pushes towards 100K or above. Um, another scenario would be that Bitcoin crashes even lower. It heads down to 20K, which everybody's been talking about and is entirely possible as far as, far as charts go. And it is impossible as far as price action. We've seen these lower wicks. That's the, we've seen this downward pressure. Look at look at this bounce versus this bounce. These these are not things to ignore. So it is possible that Bitcoin goes lower in the coming weeks and or in the month. However, leading up to the Ethereum hard fork, as Ethereum becomes deflationary, it is possible for Ethereum to catch up to Bitcoin's market cap if there is a large enough crash and there is that opening for Ethereum to lead the crypto space, which in my opinion would be best case scenario. But we're gonna look at the charts, guys. We're gonna see how price action could play out in the coming days. So Bitcoin hit our price target of 32K, which we kind of talked about on Twitter and we talked about in all of the videos so far. So the thing that I'm gonna be keeping an eye on in the coming days is mostly this RSI, because you can see here that it's bouncing this, at some, this is important to keep an eye on because at some point in the coming week, this is July 16th, July 17th, in the next week or so, either this uptrend or downtrend will be invalidated. And that could happen sooner than this, this breaking point here. On top of that, st the stochastic RSI is high, but it's kind of riding support on the daily chart. But if we go over here to the four hour chart, we can get a better idea of how things are going to shape up. So we, the stochastic RSI on the four hour is pretty low. So for that very reason, we're going to see price move up and then we can kind of look at the one day again and see that if that RSI is going to bounce there and that on the four hour, the stochastic RSI is low enough that it's going to push up probably towards this resistance level here. It all depends on how price responds to these resistance levels of 33.5 K and if it can claim that. Um, will kind of dictate how this plays out. If it cannot claim 33.5K, um, we could see these lower supports tested. So it would head back down to about 32.5 first and then 32.1. I don't think these supports will hold for long. There isn't too many bounces in the past area this whole time that it's been trending. So these lower supports haven't been tested as much. I mean, we, we kind of hung in these higher areas for longer. So it could build a base. I mean, this, there's no reason why this can't keep trading sideways aside from the RSI that we're keeping an eye on. 
So we're going to come over to the Ichimoku cloud just to get a second perspective of how this might work out. Uh, if you guys see this price target, if you guys follow me on Twitter, I, we posted this yesterday and it hit that price target perfectly. So now we're going to take a look and see how this plays out. So this is the daily chart, which still looks extremely bearish, guys. I mean, it just it is what it is. But see this this uh, lagging span here. This this should not be down here when this is down here when that red line is crossed above and the uh, conversion line is down in between that is a bearish setup not to mention the kumo cloud above everything but if we're going to try and figure out where this could go price action wise we're going to be looking at this target here which is 35 will be resistance oh, that's not my right uh where is the sorry about this guys i should probably You can see down here the stochastic RSI is super low, so that's going to have to come up, but it could run into the resistance around there. So if it run in, runs into resistance in that range, just taking a closer look here, I mean, it's going to run into resistance against the cloud as well, which is around 33K, which um, fits with our other chart here, just going back to it real quick. That fits with this chart right here, so 33 33.5K is what we were looking at here. And if we come back to the Ichimoku cloud, we are looking at, what is this, 33.3K? Let's go a little higher right into the cloud here and just to make sure that we're right on there. So that would be, yep, 33.5K. So 33.5K is most likely going to be resistance. Um, again, it all depends on if it can get above 33.5K. It would really have to get back above 35 to be somewhat bullish but it will run into around 35 yeah around 35k it's going to run into resistance again so if it can get above 33k we can relook at it but for now we're going to assume that it's going to be rejected at 33k and then retest 32k from there i would look for 30,000 i mean that's that's we're we're looking at lower price targets at the moment for bitcoin um how this plays out it's too early to know we're gonna have to wait and see how it pushes up against 33k i will be tweeting regularly as i'm kind of watching this like i always do but for now it all depends on what kind of gas it shows pushing up towards 33.5k and if it can't claim it then we should be preparing for a push down towards the lower supports potentially 31.1k to start because there is this level of support here but at this point bitcoin is looking weak so we can't really rule out any of these lower supports so jumping over to ethereum ethereum pretty much played out exactly how we thought as well we put the limit at 2500 but we talked about it not being able to reach there because of the kumo cloud and as you can see here it did lose gas kind of around 23 24 and it came straight back down to our first targets here from there, it's it you know it's looking weak, but the stochastic RSI we're looking at the four hour right now is pretty low, just like Bitcoin. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to just push straight back up, but that does mean that it's going to have to consolidate, which it could kind of do in this twenty one hundred range that it's hanging out in. Let's take a quick look at the Ichimoku cloud for Ethereum as well, because Ethereum always looks a little different than Bitcoin. So you can see here this this is a cause for concern in the four hour chart. Ethereum has now entered the cloud and the lagging span back here is crossing over and it looks like the baseline is about to cr cross above the conversion line. So this is a bearish setup on the four hour. On the one day, let's take a look how this went. So as we expected, rejected it at the cloud, came back down to our first target, not 21K, so perfectly. Um, 1985 is still potentially going to be the target. Again, you can see the bearish setup the well they haven't quite crossed it does look like the conversion line is still above for um ethereum here on the daily so that's that's what i mean about ethereum looking much better and that's why we looked at all those articles earlier at the start of the the video is that ethereum has potential i mean this it, it's facing a, the similar level of thickness of resistance as bitcoin is but ethereum has catalysts and ethereum's chart just overall has looked much better than bitcoin even on the daily rsi the, the first video that i put up was because we saw ethereum over here push into uptrend zone on the daily you see here i kind of labeled everything for you guys so it's easy to understand 
this area here was why I recorded the first video that was meant for Twitter originally. But this, this was not something to sleep on. The fact that for the first time since May 19th, Ethereum had pushed into uptrend zone where Bitcoin has, if we look at the one day chart for Bitcoin, I mean, May 19th comes back. This is April. This is May. You kind of see it dip down. It is on an uptrend. It did peak up just momentarily here, but overall Ethereum never dipped that low and has retested many times. And this move was very aggressive back into a bullish zone. So as far as price targets for Ethereum goes, I mean, if things could turn bullish, it would have to push towards 25K and get above this resistance of 23, 2400, which does not look like it's going to happen. Um, if we come back down to the four hour here, we can get a better idea of how this is gonna play out. So we may see some, some um, consolidation in, in this range before it heads back down. Um, if there's any reason for it to turn bullish, it would have to get back above this 200 EMA, but and above this uh, Fibonacci resistance as well, but those most likely will not be happening. Uh, my first price target for Ethereum is still around 20, I'd say lower than 2000 really. I've mostly talked about this price target of 1987, which I think we see on the daily chart. Let me come in closer here. Yeah, so that price target is based more off of this moving average. So a little bit under 2000, but closer to 2000 would be the first price target for Ethereum. But if Bitcoin drops, there is no reason why Ethereum can't drop. And coming back to the Ichimoku cloud to get a more accurate idea. Yeah, so 1985 is going to be the price target for Ethereum still, since I think this is gonna turn a little bearish. And on the dailies, the stochastic RSI is high anyway and it is kind of curving bearish. And if we look at the four hour, it is in the cloud. I mean, it's trying to maintain, but it will run into some resistance around 22, 22.5 maybe. But um, it most likely will keep on kind of just consolidating in here, maybe run into some resistance and then work its way down to this price target. So the current price target for now with Ethereum is going to be around 1985. So just a little bit under 2000. If it manages to get above and build support, you'd wanna see it get above this range here. So it, it needs to get above 2300 really to get back into a bullish zone. But my current price target with what's going on after maybe a, another day or so of consolidation would be a little bit under 2000 for Ethereum. So we're going to take a short look at the Bitcoin dominance chart. I'm sure you guys remember the Bitcoin dominance chart. It was that chart that everybody was always hyped on whenever it was crashing, that once it reaches this all time low, the altcoin season would start and the crypto space would skyrocket. But it seemed to be the other way around, that once the Bitcoin dominance chart had dropped too low, the entire market crashed. So it's starting to seem like Bitcoin dominance is as much a obstacle as it is a necessity for the crypto space because when the prices reach too low um, the entire market crashes and that may be because of the pairing is the fact that you can still buy most cryptocurrencies with bitcoin uh, in my opinion the way to fix that would just be to pair bitcoin with only stable coins if bitcoin is meant to be a store of value you should not be able to buy things with it other than stable coins. I mean, the same way that you can't walk into a grocery store and buy your weekly groceries with a brick of gold, Bitcoin should function under the same rules, in my opinion. The only reason I will be keeping an eye on the Bitcoin dominance chart is because prices on May 11th here was about, that was about a week before the major crash, right? And prices right now are very similar to where they were a week before the major crash. And if we go back to the Bitcoin chart for just a second, and it looks like Bitcoin is starting to grind back towards 33 right now. So that's pretty good. But if we go back here and we look at how far away we are, this is about, what is this, July 16th, that one of these trends will be invalidated, either the uptrend or downtrend. So that's going to be July 16th, which is July 8th today. So that is about a week away, right? So coming back to the Bitcoin dominance chart, May 11th, prices were the same. May 19th, eight days later, prices crash. So right now, July 8th, we're looking at prices are similar to where they were on May 11th. And in eight days, which is going to be July 16th over here, either the uptrend or the downtrend will be invalidated. So I will be keeping an eye on the dominance chart as well. Looking at Solana, Solana is one of the best looking charts in the crypto space at the moment. I mean, ADA is kind of similar, but Solana is in a, a realm of its own. I mean, it looks so good that you can even just draw a basic trend line on the daily. I mean, it won't be exact. There'll always be kind of dipping down below. Still trading above the 200 EMA on the daily. 
Um, this is a chart that is looking very good and has bounced back hard on every crash, right? So let's get the ruler out here. Big crash bounces back. What is this? 139% over the course of, I don't know, a week or two. Same thing over here, crashes down, bounces up about 100%. So the reason we're gonna be looking at Solana is because I don't necessarily think things are gonna be turning bullish anytime soon. However, Solana is great for swing trades on these crashes. So that if there is a big crash coming, we're gonna be looking at price targets for Solana. I do own Solana. I'll, I'm just looking to add and accumulate more Solana, but if I can flip some of it out for profit, I most likely will. So we're going to look at price targets here on the lower end of this dip is around $18. Man, that would have been a great buy for Solana. $18 down there. We're going to come down here to another price target around $25 also would be a great buy for Solana. Uh, currently price is around $34. And it, let's take a look, closer look at things here, guys. Stochastic RSI is low on the four hour, but that's kind of the deal for everything. By the way, I didn't quite look at the uptrend here. So you can see here that Solana is... I mean, this is on the daily guys, all right? I'm not gonna get this exactly on 50. So just know that in terms of daily charts, if the RSI is above 50, it's usually in an uptrend. The lower down it goes here, it is usually in a downtrend. But you can see here that Solana has barely wanted to leave uptrend territory. I honestly might do a video just on Solana and at least it's fundamentals in the coming weeks because there's so many things going on with Solana. There's a reason that the chart looks like this, right? I mean, charts, charts and fundamentals go hand in hand. But the thing about charts is charts tell you the story before the fundamentals come out. Charts, charts will tell you the news before the news. And uh, I mean, Solana's chart looks amazing. And there is a lot of stuff about Solana not worth ignoring, not to mention that in the next year or so, once, once, um, DeFi rolls into Solana more heavily, it's only a matter of time before these prices are extremely undervalued for Solana. I mean, that could change at any time, right? I mean, these are all small businesses. Uh, the crypto space is extremely competitive, but um, Solana is very interesting and worth keeping an eye on, but just let's focus on price targets and the chart for now. So coming in a little closer here, we'll take a look on the four hour of where this might bounce to. I would say that's a bouncing point as well. So let's let's stick with these ranges for now on the higher and lower targets. So at the moment, Solana is trading around $34. Stochastic RSI is low, but it's all dictated around Bitcoin and Ethereum. So since we're looking at lower targets for Bitcoin, if somehow Solana can get above $37, I mean, that would be bullish. It's got lots of space to go from there. So if it builds some kind of support around 37, it could very well push towards this price target here of 43. So it's got a lot of supports, a lot of resistance. Um, I'm going to be looking at lower price targets because we are pretty much prepping for a potential crash. Uh, bullish scenario is obviously if you see it start to push above this price target here, just right there, 35. If it gets above 35, maintains some level of support, it's kind of this mid range and pushes up, then some of these higher targets could be hit. But if we start to lose this support that it's riding on right now, um, 29.445 would be the next target and 26. But how low this goes, I would imagine as Bitcoin approaches 32, we would see this price target get hit. Depending on how low of a crash, 26 is possible, 18 if we get lucky. I mean, this would take a major crash, but there is a reason on the weekly chart that Bitcoin looks like it go to 27K. And I covered that in the last video. I'm, I might just tweet about it later. I'm not going to bother going back to it today, but it is, it, is the, it is the lowest point that I can see Bitcoin reaching in the next few weeks where there might be a bounce is around 27,000. So in the event that Bitcoin goes below 29, 27,000, 18 dollars for Solana is entirely possible. However, my price targets at the moment would be anything under 30, but I personally would not want to be buying Solana this high. I think 26 is possible. Let's just take a quick look at the Kumo cloud to see what is going on there. So this is the daily chart for the Ichimoku cloud on Solana. And look at this, guys. Look how thin that cloud is. If you guys have been watching my videos for a while, you know the thicker the cloud, the more resistance. There is barely any resistance there. I mean, Solana wants to turn bullish so bad. On top of that, the um, conversion line is above the baseline and the lagging span is back here on the daily. Let's take a quick look at the four hour though. Uh, trading above the cloud. I mean, any, anything is possible with Sol cause Solana's chart looks so bullish guys. It, it really could turn around at any time, but 
at the end of the day, it's all dictated on Bitcoin. So if it falls through, I would look for this, this area of support down here, potentially around 31K. If 31K is lost and Bitcoin goes low enough. Yeah, I mean, 20, just like we saw earlier, right? Price target would really be around here, which if we take a look at the other chart that we were looking at, the basic chart, my price target for Solana was also 26. And then if we come here, right? Or no, it was 29 here. No, no, 26 is what I was saying over here. Yeah, 26K is, not 26K, sorry guys. $26 is what I was looking at more of a, a better entry, maybe to pick some Solana up to try and get a swing trade, anything lower, Below 26 would also be great, but looking at the chart price over here, price target remains around 26. So to keep this video short, guys, we'll come back to Solana in a future video, but around $26 would be my price target for Solana. So taking a quick look at KSM, this was the May 19th crash. You can see KSM used to be trading in the high 600s. And at the lowest part of this dip, it dipped down to around, where's my price labels right there, around 155, the low 100s. Um, this, is, uh, this is a crazy chart, but KSM is a big project. Uh, for those of you that don't know much about KSM, the only thing that you need to really look into, and again, I'll probably touch on this in a future video where I could just talk about just KSM, is the parachains. And the way that that works is that you take your KSM and you pretty much stake it um, in return for receiving uh, pretty much early access to projects on the, you know, Kusama and Polkadot network. Uh, it's, it's interesting, right? Because that, that kind of stuff is similar to what I've talked about in terms of coins with use case, right? If, if you're holding a crypto through a quote unquote bear market and there is no reason to use the crypto, um, there is no reason for the price to move up. However, if you're looking at something like Kusama or Cake and you're looking at something where not only are people holding it, people are staking it long term, uh, that is a reason for price to move up. Not to mention you get the benefit of some free tokens and some profit for holding Kusama. So as far as price targets to go, the chart still looks rough. I mean, I wouldn't want to really get in. I mean, it could run into run into resistance around 274 as well but in the shorter time frames if we look at the four hour there was a pretty big bounce from here if we take the ruler to about here so that's about a what is that 253 percent bounce off the may 19th crash right so it dropped down to 157 on may 19th by june 8th it was trading back at 543 which is pretty crazy and then a straight landslide back down which is not the best look Let's take a quick look at the chart, the, the Ichimoku cloud for Kusama. So this is Kusama. And to be honest, this, this looks rough, right? This entire, you know, it's pretty far off from the cloud, not to mention the baseline is above the conversion line and the lagging span is down here. So that is all a very bearish setup. So this kind of indicates honestly, the price might go lower. So I would, I would keep my targets low for Kusama. I'm not even, I'm not even going to bother talking about too many higher price targets for Kusama other than these lower ones judging by this. So I would look for Kusama to pull back down under $200. Even then I might not be tempted to, I, I do own some, but I don't own a lot. I've been waiting for lower price targets for, I would, I would wait for 150. I mean, to be honest, and even that might be kind of high, but 150 would be the entry I'd be looking for at the moment with Kusama. Let's go back to the basic chart here and see where that kind of lines up. Yeah, I mean, on the basic chart again, 150 is showing up over here. Um, depending on how low Bitcoin goes, there's always anything around 98 as possible, but somewhere in this range, if, you know, 150 be a good entry, maybe dollar cost average, try and get some around here. But this, this range between 150 to around just a little under hundred dollars would be a great entry, but Kusama is a great project and it's got, I mean, it's, it's undervalued right now because this, this was the May 19th crash. And there, there's a lot of reasons that this will, this should be at least around $300, right? Like this should be back above this moving average. So Kusama, I'd be looking for these lower entries, uh, depending on how low Bitcoin goes. 
All right, guys, thanks for hanging out. I hope some of this information was useful for you guys. If you guys are new here, I am on every day. Five charts, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and three other ones. We go over a bit of crypto news. Uh, if you guys are new here, again, please do subscribe and do hit the like button on this video. Any interaction with the channel will help this channel grow. This is a new channel, guys. This is our fifth video. Those of you guys that have left comments down below, those of you guys that have uh, tweeted at me with suggestions, I honestly do really appreciate it. Um, I try my best to listen to you guys and throw your suggestions into the videos. Um, I really do appreciate you guys and I love talking about crypto and whether I was filming these videos or not, this is usually how I spend my mornings just kind of going over charts. So I hope you guys found this useful. Um, again, guys, if you're new here, hit the subscribe. If you're not following me on Twitter, Kevin Crates underscore on Twitter, extremely active on there. If you tweet at me, I will always tweet back at you. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate you. I'm out.